My output is often called a controlled variable, a CV, and I'll sometimes use the symbol Y to give it to the note that one. And then a lot of our discussion then the past few weeks has been on relating <coughs> what I call outputs in the Laplace domain divided by inputs in the Laplace domain is equal to a process in the Laplace domain. So that transfer function expressed in terms of the Laplace variable S, so the process transfer function, we've often called this simply G of S. It's telling me how my process will be made. Okay, so here's the important part. G of S is a description of the process. And G of S by itself does nothing for you. You have to tell G of S <coughs> simply you will have to recognize that G of S is simply a description of the process. If you want to know what the output is going to be on that process, you have to tell what the input is. Okay, without specifying what your input looks like, this G of S really doesn't tell you a whole lot in the time notes. So let's, let's be clear what we're doing here. We're controlling our processes, we're trying to control this CD or this Y over here. All of this is in the time domain. The process doesn't work in the Laplace transform. Our whole process, in the nature of reality, is in the time domain. We use the Laplace transform description because it's easy to work with. It makes work with only easier, a whole lot easier. But our processes still work and operate in the time domain. So if we want to know what the output is in the time domain, we have to know what the input is. So I just, it seems like, like it's very obvious, but we'll see why this is an issue in a minute. So <coughs> let's just take a note of something. Time domain description of the process, description of behavior of the process requires specifying the input. is by recognizing the following. If my process had the following inputs, then if it's a first order system, the output would look something like that. So for that input, that might be the output I get. But if I take that same process, and my input is a step up and then a step down again, my output is going to look very different in the time line. It's going to go up and then go down again. Okay, so very important, this is all the same process. Well, the gain of that system is 
five. Okay? And it's not 0.5. The gain of that system was one, because that's the process. The 0.5 came from the input. So what the purpose of this description in G is it tells you what the output will look like for the input. If you don't specify the input, you won't know what the output is in the time period. So when we talk about our process and the description of the process, it's a generic description so that we can use it for any future input that we might put into the process. Now, let's just uh, step back a minute to see why that's important in context. If you've got the handout in front of you, everyone got a copy of that now? Everyone still need one? And then you go express that ODD now in the deviation variables. So by that third row then in the handouts, you basically got an ODD that only has linear terms in it. The next line, the fourth line says take the Laplace transform. That we read off the tables. And then the next line, the fifth line, is really where you've got two decisions. The first one is to solve analytically. That's so that you can go back to the time domain. Okay, and then you use partial fraction expansion. But what we also do is we follow what's now here in the bottom right. Okay, so that fifth block down from the top on the right hand side, which says formulate transfer function. That's where we, we often end up. We often are not concerned about time domain response. You've noticed that in a few of the assignment questions, without going back to the time domain, talk about what the stability of the system is, whether it oscillates, and so forth. And we do that because we like to work with transfer functions that simplify our process models quite dramatically. When we work with series models and parallel models, then transfer functions are great because they multiply or they add. So this handout here is just Perhaps a way, if you've not 
conceptualize what we've done over the past four weeks. This one will help show the various aspects of what we've done and how it all um, sits and hangs together. To take a look at that, it's, it's in the textbook. Most of you have probably seen it already. Uh, but for those of you that haven't, spend some time making sure that you understand what the sort of process is that we're following here. So with that in mind then, let's perhaps take a look at the assignment that you did for this week, question three. And that will, I'm going to talk about that assignment question in the context of this handout, so you have an actual example. Terms that are on the left hand side are nonlinear. 
That's that's clear. Right? Okay, so let's take a look at how we break this down. Look at the handout in front of you. What should we be doing next? Okay, so let's linearize. What is the linear expansion of F times C A? So let's just take the middle term there. We can just linearize F times C A. We just do that one. Yeah? Based on the question, how would you know that F is F C? Sorry, how would you do what? How would you know that F is changing before it? The question told us that the flow is So the question told us that the inlet concentration and inlet flow were both changing. So FCA is a nonlinear term. We want to approximate that by linearization. What does that expand out to? So take a well, perhaps instead of just me writing it out for you, can you take a minute and do this? If you've done it already in assignment, you'll know what the answer is. Um, also do the nonlinear expansion to CA squared. Um, when you were talking about uh, parallel systems, um, you were telling us how you could treat one of the inputs that's changing as a constant, and then treat, and then obviously do, the, do that oppositely as well, and treat, and, uh, treat one as, as changing and treat the other one as changing. So I'm wondering if instead of linearizing those terms, couldn't I have just broken it up into two problems where I... You get the same answer. Okay. Okay, so everyone got it. A lot of people just seem to have got it in front of them. So let's take a look. Let's take the easiest one, CA squared. The linearization of that. CA squared S evaluated at steady state. So concentration of A leaving the tank out here at steady state squared plus the derivative of this nonlinear term with respect to CA. 2CAS two CA and CA minus CAS. <coughs> so that's the linearization of that nonlinear term. What's the linearization of the first term? time varying and CA is time varying. So we've got two time varying terms. This is a function in two variables. So the Taylor series expansion for that follows the same principle. It's just you'll have the partial with respect to one variable plus the partial with respect to the other. So let's, uh, if you, for those of you that like to see it a little bit more analytically before we jump into solving that, Maybe if I write it this way, you'll remember from your math courses what the Taylor series expansion is of the function f, which is a function of two variables, x and y. If we expand that from the Taylor series, it says f at xs and ys. So evaluate the function at steady state. Punch the partial of f with respect to x, evaluate it at xs times x minus xs plus the partial of f with respect to the second variable evaluated at steady state times the deviation of y minus ys. So that's that, not that in general mathematical terms, but use this notation over here then. If we expand the partial derivative, then we get, so my first term is FA, sorry, FS, I should say, times 
times CAS, that's the function evaluated at steady state, plus the partial of that, let's take the partial with respect to F first, and the partial derivative of this non-linear term with respect to F is CA, but evaluate that at steady state, that's CAS times F minus F. And then the second term, the partial derivative with respect to CA, leaves you with F evaluated at steady state times CA minus CAS. So that nonlinear term expands then in the, pretty much in the same way we saw for a single variable, it expands for two variables by using the partial Taylor series expansion. If we write out the partial, uh, sorry, the nonlinear expression for F times C A naught, we're going to have something very similar. So let's just quickly write that down. F times C A naught, we can approximate by F S, C A naught S, plus C A naught S times F minus F S again plus Fs times Ca0 minus Ca0 S. So up there on the whiteboard is the three nonlinear terms approximated by the Taylor series expansions. Your value, your partial value, your actual impact that way. So, Maybe what I should emphasize here is if I evaluate the partial derivative with respect to x, I should actually write, I evaluate it at steady state, so all my variables at steady state. That will be a little bit more correct. Okay. So the, the partials, the, the point remember I made in the last class is it's always a constant plus a constant. So that at steady state will be a constant number times the deviation variable. And then plus another constant times the same deviation we showed that, that process, you'll get the same answer. I'm showing you this, this approach, you'll end up with the same, same solution. Okay, so let's sub those in. I'll give you a minute. Sub in those three nonlinear terms. Their linearized approximations go into that expression. So you're going to get a, a fairly long, messy expression over here. Set that equal to steady state and do the subtraction. So I'll give you three, four minutes to do that because it's going to take some time. And you should end up with some pretty dramatic simplification.
kind of concerned that you didn't do it like this in the assignment. Remember that my course is not about getting things 100% correct, it's about showing you understanding. Right? So I'm not here to make sure you can repeat everything I do in class back on paper, I think that's no good. What my courses are is that you can read the textbooks and understand and process the teacher material. So if you work through it and follow a systematic process, that's most of the grades up there. Right? It's not about getting the exact answer. I want you to understand the process and the system that we're following. So let's take a look at the next step then. If we sub in, we've got V times DCA and T. Let's put in that first nonlinear term over there. We have FS times CAS. CAS. And I'm going to just put in the deviation variable to save myself writing a little bit. So that's F minus FS. <coughs> So we can just call that f dash. Okay, so this f minus fs, this term over here, that's f dash. This term over here, that's ca dash. This term over here, that's ca naught dash. So we recognize that our deviation variables will always show up in the linearization. So we can use that shortcut notation when I sub in. So f dash plus fs times ca dash. The next term, let's put a minus there in the bracket, is fs times ca naught s plus ca naught s times f dash plus fs times ca naught <coughs> you, you have the positive FCA and you have negative FCA on. So what are you referring to? Uh, what you just wrote down. You wrote down FCA minus FCA on. Oh. Right? You refer to this term here? Actually, positive in the first thing should be negative. Sorry, I'm not sure which term. One, two, three, four, five, so, and six. So, like, so the the last three terms should all be positive, and the first three terms should be negative. Oh, I uh, I've switched it around. I see. Thank you. So. Okay. Yeah. So I pushed. Uh, <coughs> I switched these two terms around. I just don't want to rewrite it. <laughs> okay, everyone clear what I've messed up over here? So, the nonlinear terms expanded for FCA. This is my FCA term, and this is my F times CA naught. And then the last nonlinear expansion is the minus V CA squared. So minus V times K, and then the CA squared expansion is CA S squared plus 2 CA S times CA dash. So then when I set this to steady state, Thank you. 
write that as 0 is equal to minus FSCAS. And at steady state, these deviation terms will fall away to 0 based on the fact of how we define our deviations. So 0 minus FSCAS plus FSCA naught S minus VK CAS. Maybe, um, maybe I'll, if you've got this down, that's quite okay. I'll just emphasize the zeros by perhaps writing it this way. Plus zero, plus zero. Let's say for CA not S. that first equation up here from the second equation. And then we'll start actually to see how things fall into place. It's a little bit messy as I as we said it would be. But things quickly fall into place when we do the subtraction. We'll get inside DCA dash by DT. So now my differential equation variables in deviation form as well. That's equal to the subtract over there. When we do the subtraction, this term and this term are identical, so they they cancel out. And then we're left with C A S F dash minus zero down here. So that's always one advantage of the linearization is that we get that simplification. So let's expand that then we'll get use the order that I have on that board, minus CAS F dash, minus FS times CA dash. Let's expand the second bracket over there. The first term can drops away in that second bracket. Plus CA naught S F dash, plus FS CA naught dash. Final bracket is minus BK the CAS squared terms cancel out and then we're left with the two CAS to CA dash. two inputs that are time varying, f dash and c a naught, and then it's my f dash, f dash, and c a naught is time varying. There's a c a naught that's time varying in deviation variable. And then we've got a c a, So let's uh, rearrange that a bit to extract CA dash over to the left hand side. That's where we want to end up with as my output is CA. So we want all my CA dash terms over on the left hand side. Let's just do a little bit of simplification here. So collect out my CA dash terms and my F dash terms. So F dash, then I'm going to 
take the CA mod S minus CA S. Let's collect my CA dash terms. And write that as minus CA dash to FS plus 2 times BK CAS. And then the final term is the CA mod plus FS CA mod. <coughs> the inputs and the outputs. So two inputs CA naught dash and F dash and one output CA dash. So what we can do is write that finally as bring over the output variable to all the way to the left hand side and then start to take the Laplace transforms of this term. So go ahead and, and do that. Well, I clear the boards. side term, the derivative is V times S times CA dash and the last variable S. Bring over that output term to the left hand side and take the Laplace transform that. Finally, try to rearrange this to get a transfer function, which is what our goal was. Our transfer function between the output and the two inputs. So I can write this then as CA dash of S. the CA naught term in that uh, first term on the right be CAS? No, because it's CA in, on the right hand side there is a, sorry, CA on the right hand side? Like in, in the term multiplied by F dash of S, it should be CA naught S minus CAS instead oh, of CA. CA yeah. <clears throat> so that's the derivative, that's F dash of S. There's my CA naught S, and there's CAS. Okay, so it's CAS. Thank you. Um, the middle term of the S, is that V multiplied by the S from the class, or is that V subjugated? Oh, V uh, from class S. Um, for the derivative, the derivative of the class, what about the CAS? Uh, 
Okay, so what about the CA dash at time zero? That term is zero because of the definition of deviation variables. Yeah, that's in the beginning. No, this, okay, so the Laplace transform of this term, the Laplace transform of V times SCA T is equal to V times S the Laplace variable times CA dash. So let me just look up and finalize this transfer function and see where inputs and outputs come explicitly. What we've got over there, the last equation on the whiteboard, is essentially written in, in the following form. We've got CA dash of S is equal to some function times F dash of S plus another function times CA dash of S. So there's my output. One input f dash of s plus another input as a function of s. And this transfer function that's over there in the box, I'm not going to rewrite it. It simply brings over that denominator over there from the left hand side, brings it out and divides it from the right hand side. So essentially, what you get then is a function that's of the form. I'm not writing it is I just don't have time to write it up and it's an easy algebraic step. But what you get then is essentially a function of the form k1 times tau 1 s plus 1. And the second box over here is another transfer function k2 times tau 2 s plus 1. So rearrange this expression over here to isolate the tau s plus 1. That's, this is all just a constant, so you can rearrange it in that form. And then bring it over to the left hand side, over to the right hand side, I should say. The algebraic manipulation isn't, isn't a big deal. What I am concerned that you understand here is the fact that we've got two inputs to the system, the flow rate and the inlet concentration and it affects a single output, CA. That's the crucial understanding you must have. Now many of you in the assignment likely work along the lines where you kept the flow constant and then you did the partial, uh, you did the non-linearity expansion with respect to concentration and then you switch those two around. That's also a valid approach to answering this question. You get the same solution. So two different ways to get the same result. Thank you.